Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On your huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. You fellas and girls know a good food when you taste one. And here's what's so good about Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. They're made from only the premium grains of wheat or rice. And these choice select grains are shot from guns. Actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. Yes, they're crisp, tender, delicious. Just see how good they taste tomorrow morning. Treat yourself to Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Skagway, in American territory, was the principal port of entry to the Yukon during the gold rush. And it was as wild and lawless a town as was ever found in the Old West. Sergeant Preston drove down there from White Pass one afternoon in December. And after he had unharnessed his team and turned the dogs into the run in back of the Skagway Inn, he made some inquiries of the proprietor. Who's the town marshal this week, Joe? <coughs> you mean to say you haven't heard the news, Sergeant? No, what is it, another murder? I should say not. Why, there was a little gunfight outside the 303 last night, but everybody who was in it is in jail today. Oh, that's practically unbelievable. None of Sophie Smith's men could have been involved. Oh, you were wrong, Sergeant. They were. And Sophie's letting them stay in jail? He can't do a thing about it. This town's under martial law, Sergeant. Martial law? Well, I guess you could call it that. Anyway, we've got a detachment of Reens acting as our police department. Twenty of them. They landed a week ago. Oh, that's good news. Oh, fine, boys. I sure hope none of them get killed. From what I've heard about your Marines, they can take care of themselves. But only twenty of them. This town could use two hundred. Well, I guess my business is with them, Joe. Where are they? Or are they making their headquarters? Well, they built themselves a log barracks at the far edge of town. Toward White Pass? No, the other side, toward Chilkoot. Oh. Who's in command? There's a young fella named Vance. Uh, Captain Vance. I'll have a talk with him right away. See you later, Joe. Right. Come on, King. Mounted uniform you're wearing under your parka? Yes, Captain. Sergeant Preston. Glad to meet you, Sergeant. You've been up here long? About a year now. Since the very beginning of the rush, huh? Yes. Well, they tell me you manage to keep pretty good order in the territory. Most of the time we do. I'd like to know how you manage it. This is the meanest collection of human beings I've ever run into. Why, if I were to do my job right here, I'd have to jail half the population. What happens when they cross the border? How do you scare them into behaving themselves? Well, uh, we don't have as big a problem as you do, Captain. You see, we don't let the known troublemakers cross the border. We send them right back to you. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but uh, as a matter of fact, I'd like to relieve you of one of them, if he's in town, that is. Why, who's that? His name's Scar Bradford. I haven't heard of him yet. About a week ago, he shot and robbed a miner named Gordon outside of Whitehorse. He took his dogs and sled, and on the sled... It was a fortune in gold. A 
fortune, huh? Yes. Gordon was on his way out of the territory with it. He didn't die. Traveler found him and brought him into White Horse. But it was three days before he was able to talk enough to give me the uh, details of the holdup. There's no doubt Scarab Bradford is the man we're after. And he's here in Skagway. I think it's probable, Captain. Remember the blizzard day before yesterday? I sure do. I think he managed to slip through Chilkoot Pass during it. Oh, uh huh. What's he look like? Six feet tall, 200 pounds, black hair, black beard, scar over his right eye. And you want us to arrest him? Yes. Should be in your authority to grant extradition so I can take him back to White Horse for trial. It is. You can have him if you want him. If we can find him for you. Well, he'll be trying to get back to the States. I'd suggest checking with any steamers that are ready to leave. The Portland and the Golden Lady are in port, but they're not sailing for another week. Then there's a schooner anchored out in the harbor, but I think it's stuck here. Stuck? Most of the crew deserted. The captain was in here yesterday. Wanted his men found and returned to the ship. You can't do that, can you? Certainly not. But this Bradford's different. Do you know him when you see him, Sergeant? Yes, I do. Well, uh, why don't you try to find him yourself? You know Skagway better than I or my men. You find him and we'll arrest him. All right, Captain. We'll be ready to lend you a hand whenever you say so. Well, I hope that'll be tonight. So do I. Good luck. Thanks, Captain. Come on, King. <laughs> the sergeant returned to the inn. And after supper, he went to his room and changed from his uniform into a check shirt and corduroy trousers. King watched him curiously. <laughs> What's the matter, boy? Don't you like this outfit? <laughs> well, I'll tell you why I'm wearing it, King. You see, I have no authority here, and I can't make people answer my question. But if they think I'm just another prospector, they'll feel more like talking, especially around the 303 in the waterfront cafes. Oh, you don't like them, do you, fellow? All that smoke and noise. Well, there's no reason why you have to come along with me. I'll put you out in the run with the rest of the team, and you can go to sleep early tonight, King. Maybe we'll be starting back for Whitehorse the first thing in the morning. After the sergeant had turned King into the run, he started on a round of the uproarious Skagway cafes. Scar Bradford was not at the 303, and no one there had seen him. Then the sergeant went down to the waterfront. He talked with the captains of the Portland and the Golden Lady, but Scar hadn't tried to book passage with them. He was heading for one of the waterfront cafes when he saw two burly seamen tying up a dinghy. Hello. How are you, sir? You from the schooner? What about it? Oh, just wondering. Your captain managed to sign on a new crew yet? Hey, you know a lot about our business, don't you? Maybe you'd like a job. No, thanks. I have one. Oh, come on. Think about it a little. Have a drink with me and push. No, thanks. Well, what do you want to stay around this icebox for? We're heading for the South Sea. Oh, that sounds interesting. You carrying any passengers? On the Northern Star? No. You carried them from San Francisco, didn't you? The skipper had enough of it. The sergeant was watching the second sailor. His right hand was thrust deep in the pocket of his pea jacket. And from the expression on the two men's faces, he knew he was in for trouble. He took a step backward. Get him, boy! Right. Butcher's hand came out of his pocket. He had a belaying pin in it, but the sergeant ducked aside as the sailor tried to bring it down on his head. He lashed out with the right and caught the man on the jaw. Butch was staggered, but the other sailor had moved around in back of the sergeant and grabbed his arm. The sergeant wrenched himself free and landed another right. The two men closed in on him. He kept them at arm's length with his fists. Left and right, and then right and left again. He edged back farther from the dock's edge. Then, as he drove home another blow, his foot slipped on a patch of ice. For a second, he was off balance. And in that second, the belaying pin crashed down. Oh. Hey, good work, Coach. I'll take his head and take his feet. Yeah. That's the good, huh? Sure. Now we come back for some more. A hundred bucks a piece is for his pay. Ah, that does it. Hey, you roll. Okay, me. It was half an hour later that the sergeant regained consciousness. His head ached. He started to raise his hand to it and then realized his hands were tied behind his back. His ankles were tied together as well. From the motion, he could tell that he was on board a ship. He looked around. There was a man lying on the rough planks a few feet away from him. He, too, was bound. Well, you feeling better? I guess so. What they do? Crack you over the head? Yes, I made the mistake of taking a drink with Nick and Bush earlier tonight. 
They put some knockout drops in it. Where are we? Brig in the Northern Star. In a smelly hole. My name's Yank. What's yours? Preston. Looks as if we're shipping together. That the idea? Sure. They'll keep us tied up here until they clear the harbor. And we'll have to work or starve. I will say that Limey's grub is pretty fair. You know this ship? Yeah. Came down from Frisco with it. And then you deserted? No. No, I was only signed on as an extra hand from Frisco to Skagway. Huh? Got paid off and went ashore. But <laughs> next day, all the regular crew did the same thing. Went ashore and didn't come back. All but Nick and Butch and Limey. Nick's the mate. Ornery. Redhead? Yeah. I agree. So now they're shanghaiing a crew. Yeah. Any idea where they're heading? Well, Nick tried to talk me into signing on before he fixed up my drink. Said they were sailing for Tahiti. Oh? Huh? Well, if there's any truth in it or not, I don't know. That's a long trip. Probably never make it. I asked him what the idea was. He said some bonanza millionaire had chartered the house. Taking a pleasure trip on the Northern Star. Is a man crazy? Do you lose your mind when you make a million dollars? Of course, it may have been nothing but Nick's talk. I wonder. Well, somebody coming in. Another recruit, perhaps. Uh, Nick and Butch have made a fast trip as it is. So, uh, where's my parka? Nick took it. He liked it. Oh. No, it isn't, Nick. It's a skipper. Well, Yank, you want to go to work? No, I want to be put ashore. Not a chance, and you know it. Might as well sign on. Not me. When are we sailing, Skipper? When you address me, mister, you call me sir. <coughs> Is that understood? Aye, aye, sir. Yeah. Have you ever sailed before? No, but it sounds like a good idea. If signing on means I have the freedom of the ship, why not? It's better than lying here. Now you're talking sense. Just a minute, Nate. Huh? Hold your lantern closer to that man's face. What'd you say, Scar? Hold your lantern closer to his face. All right. That's it. Do you know him? Yeah. Your men have made a big mistake. This is Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. Might be a good idea to drop him overboard, just the way he is, bound hand and foot. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Boy, oh boy, only three more days until Christmas. Huh, I wonder who that is. Why, it's our friend, the postman. How are you? Fine, young fella. I'll bet you're mighty busy delivering Christmas packages these days. Sure am. I tell you, folks are smart to get theirs in the mail early. Uh, got anything for me? <laughs> well, well, no, not, not exactly. Just this here. Why, of all things, it's a package of Quaker puffed wheat and a package of Quaker puffed rice. That's right. Well, what gives? I tell you, I used to eat a big bowl full of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice every morning. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. And I used to pour on the old milk or cream and top it off with fruit. Yes. <laughs> you know, a postman like me works pretty hard. On your feet all day, you need a good breakfast. Well, that's right. Everyone does. And Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Oh, man, it, it tastes swell, too. But look, a, a moment ago, you said you used to eat either Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice every morning. Well, sir, now I got a better idea. Oh? I take a big bowl, pour some Quaker popped rice into it until it's half full. Then fill it up the rest of the way with Quaker puffed wheat. I get it. Sort of half and half, huh? Sure. That way I enjoy both kinds together, right at the same time, every morning. Well, that's a fine idea. <laughs> Fellas and girls, just try it tomorrow morning. And don't forget, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot from guns. To make them crisp and tender. Yes, these king-size premium grains are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. Ask Mom right now to order big red and blue packages of delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Shot from guns. <laughs> Now.
Now to continue. For a moment after Scar Bradford had identified Sergeant Preston and suggest that he be dropped overboard, the skipper stared into the sergeant's face. Then he turned to Scar. We'll talk it over in my cabin. Come on, Scar. Right with you. Sergeant Preston, eh? That's right, Yank. Nick sure did make a mistake. Seems to me I'm the one who did that. I should have been more careful of my footing. Who's the guy with the scar? Scar Bradford. Wanted for robbery and attempted murder. Yeah? So he's the Bonanza millionaire. No wonder he wants to go to Tahiti instead of Frisco. How much did he steal? Hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Shoot somebody? Yes. If he tries murder once, he won't mind trying it again. I've been thinking of that. You're in a spot, Sergeant. Sorry to say this, but so are you, Yank. To get away with murder, they'll have to get rid of you, too. I don't think the skipper could expect much cooperation from him. He sure couldn't. What do you suppose they're doing? Talking it over. You're a big man, Sergeant. The two of them would have a tough time carrying you up the companion way to the deck. They might wait till Nick and Butch got back. I was hoping that. What are you doing? When the skipper held the lantern close, I noticed a spike sticking out of the bulkhead over here to my left. I might be able to saw through these ropes on my wrist. Did you find it? Yes. I'll try it anyway. It'll take time. King had burrowed into the snow and fallen into a light sleep. Suddenly, although he had heard no sound, he was wide awake. He jumped to his feet and shook the snow from his back. <laughs> then he began to pace back and forth in the run. He stopped at the far end of the run, gauging the height of the fence. He ran and jumped. A moment of scrambling at the top and he was over. He dropped to the ground and ran toward the center of town. For the next 15 minutes, he ran up and down the main street, looking for his master. It was down near the waterfront that he saw his first familiar face. The man in uniform the sergeant had talked to that afternoon. Captain Vance and a Marine corporal were running toward one of the waterfront cafes, where loud voices announced that a fight was in progress. King followed close at the captain's heels, and when he and the corporal entered the cafe, King slipped in behind them. All right, stand aside, let us through. I'll teach you to mess around with my drink. Watch him, Butch. Grab him. Nick was slugging it out with a husky young sailor. All right, all right. Break it up. You're both going to jail. No, not me, Captain. Both of you. Will you listen to what this lug tried to do? I'll listen. What's your story? He poured something in my drink. What? Water? Wow. No! That's right, Captain. It was nothing but water. I figured he'd had a little too much. Oh, right, here's the drink right here. You drink it if it was only water you poured in. That's fair enough. Go ahead. Well, sure, why don't you? Well, I, uh... See there? He won't do it. He was trying to drug me. What? Let me tell you about it, Captain. All right. These two... Nick and Butch, they're from the schooner Northern Star. They lost their crew and they're trying to raise another one. They tried to talk me into signing on, a trip to Tahiti with a $100 bonus. I wouldn't have any part of their floating graveyard, so out come the knockout drops. If I'd have drunk that whiskey, I'd have passed out in five minutes. And they'd have hauled me aboard their dirty hull. Yeah, that's right. Let me smell that drink. Here. Hmm. What about it, Nick? Captain, this man belongs to our crew. That's a lie. I just worked for my passage from Frisco here. What's your name? Tim Morgan. I'm going to have a talk with your skipper, Nick. There'll be no shanghaiing and Skagway. Hey, hey, this dog's got a whole parka. Take him, let go. King had been sniffing at the parka Nick was wearing. There was no doubt in the dog's mind that it belonged to his master. But where was the sergeant? Get away, you King was confused. The only thing he could think of was to try and get back his master's property. He set his teeth firmly in the bottom of the parka and tried to pull it off Nick's shoulders. Tie his jaws loose. Wait a minute. I know this dog. It belongs to Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted. Huh? And I remember that parka. The sergeant was wearing it this afternoon. Yeah, you're wrong, Captain. I bought this from a prospector who was going back to the States just this afternoon. Isn't that right, boy? Yeah, that's right. Look at that dog. He knows who the parka belongs to. How did you get it? I told you. I want the truth. I got it from a prospector. I don't know where he got it this afternoon. What time? Oh, about four o'clock. The sergeant was wearing it at five. Wait a minute. Could he have gone out to your ship and... Nick, what's your big hurry in rounding up a crew? There's no special hurry. Sailing for Tahiti, you said, Tim? That's what Nick said. With one passenger on board, huh, Nick? No. We'll see. Handcuff Nick and Butch Corp. Hey, what is Let go of the parker, boy. We're going to find the sergeant. All right, the rest of you get back to what you were doing. 
In the brig aboard the Northern Star, the sergeant continued to work at the rope, binding his wrists. How's it coming, sergeant? Two strands have given way. Slow work. I figure they've been gone nearly half an hour. How about? If you do manage it, we'll be in good shape. If. There's nothing in here to use as a weapon. We can grab them as soon as they step inside the room. Rope's almost through. Hold it, hold it. What's the matter? Someone coming in. Oh, no sense in giving up now. Hang the ladder and that nail by the door. That is up the companionway. Where? Oh, yeah, I see it. The skipper and Scar walked into the brig. The rope around the sergeant's wrist was almost ready to give way, but his last hope faded when he saw the belaying pin in the skipper's hand. As the skipper brought it down, the sergeant managed to swing his head aside at the last moment, and it only hit him a glancing blow, but he pretended to lose consciousness. All right, now it should be easy. Well, you dirty rats. You're next, Yank. Come on, Scar, give me a hand. All right, skipper. The skipper and Scar struggled out of the brig, carrying the still form of the sergeant. He tested the rope and knew that one more violent effort would part the last strands. He waited until the top of the companionway was reached. And then he wrenched his hands free of the rope. Look out! He's got his hands free! The sergeant kicked out with his feet, and the skipper was knocked backwards down the companionway. Unable to stand, the sergeant wrestled Scar to the deck. He knew that he must finish Scar off quickly if he were to have time to untie the ropes around his ankles before the skipper joined in the fight. But Scar was warding off his blows and trying desperately to break his hold. The sergeant heard steps on the companionway. And as he turned to meet the skipper, Scar jumped to his feet. His hobnail boot hit the sergeant just behind the ear. He's he's out now for sure. Grab hold. Wait till I catch my breath. and do that later. When it comes to Yank, be sure you knock him out. We'll take care of this I... one and then take care of Yank later. Okay. Come on, take his feet. Okay. Let's pitch him overboard. Uh, 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 hold uh, that. Uh, higher. Uh, higher. Uh, no. Uh, the shock of the ice-cold water brought the sergeant to. He kicked desperately with his feet and fought his way to the surface. The cold cut into his skin like a knife. He could see the lights of the waterfront hundreds of yards away, and with his heavy shoes and clothing, it was costing him a terrible effort to merely keep his head above water. But the shore was his only chance, and he struck out toward it. A few strokes and his strength started to go. A few more, and he knew he would be finished. At first, he couldn't believe his ears. He heard a dog barking. It was King. King! King, fellas, here, boy. A moment later, King was swimming beside him. He reached out and grabbed Steady hold down. of his harness. That's it. How are you, sir? Another moment and a boat loomed alongside. That's enough. Help me, Corporal. Get him. I got him. Get the other side, quick. All right. He. Captain Vance uh, leaned over the board. side and pulled him aboard. Uh, now the dog. Yeah. He lay still, uh, gasping for breath. As King was pulled aboard. The sergeant recognized Nick and Butch at the oars. There was a Marine Corporal in the bow covering them with a gun. The captain put a parka around the sergeant. The sergeant's own Parker. Where'd you get this? Nick was wearing it. I recognized it after King tried to pull it off him. How'd you and King get together? He was evidently looking for you and found me instead. What happened to him? I'll tell you all about it later. You see anyone on the deck of the schooner? No. The skipper and Scar Bradford, they must have gone below to get Yank. Yank? A sailor, friend of mine. We're going to throw him overboard, too. Hurry, Captain. Nick, you and Buck start rowing. Take us alongside your ladder. You can't blame us for this. We didn't have any part in it. Oh, all right. As Nick rowed, the captain cut, cut the ropes, ropes on the sergeant's face. The small boat scraped against the side of the ship. There's no ladder. Do you have an extra gun, Captain? You better stay here. If you don't mind, I'd like to be in on the finish. Right. Give him your gun, Corporal. You stay here and watch Nick and Butch. Right, Let's Captain. go, Captain. All right. There's the companion way that leads to the brig. Someone's coming up. Yes, they've got the yank. All right, now, come on. Get a hold there. That's far enough, Skipper. Hey, hey, he's Scar. Put the sailor down on the deck. Get him, Skipper. Skipper, you and Scar, stick up your hands. You're under arrest. I haven't figured out all the charges against you, but between Canada and the United States, you'll probably spend the rest of your lives in jail. I'll oh, borrow your knife, Captain, to cut these ropes on the yank. Oh, sure. Here. Thanks. Get moving, you two. Right. Over the side. Easy. Step easy into that boat. Easy. We're carrying a full cargo of crooks. I'm glad to see you again, Sergeant. Glad to see you, Yank. <laughs> oh, what's so funny? I was just thinking. Saved by the United States Marine, 
and the Northwest Mounted Police. Uh, oh. <laughs> you know, I, I can't help feeling like a pretty important guy. Hey, what's that I hear? A dog? Yes, it's my dog, King. He knew I was in trouble somehow. He put the captain on my trail. I can't exactly figure it, but he surely had a hand in this rescue. <laughs> He's still worried about you. Yes, Yang. See, he can't understand why I'm not coming down the ladder with the others. Quiet, King. I'm all right, boy. The captain's arrested the skipper and Scar, and they're going to jail, along with Nick and Butch. And that means this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Going, going, gone. That's the way Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice disappears at breakfast time. These ready-to-serve cereals hit the spot from first to last delicious spoonful. Yes, wheat or rice shot from guns is exploded up to eight times normal size to make it crisp and tender. And they hit the mark for nourishment, too. Delicious Quaker puffed wheat and rice give you added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Tomorrow morning, fill a bowl with Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Top with fruit, like, say, sliced bananas. Add milk or cream and sugar. Talk about swell tasting. Say, just you watch it disappear, but fast. <laughs> Remember, delicious, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice come in the big red and blue packages. They're never sold in bags or bulk. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the Sergeant's Present. When King and I hit the trail for Pierre Reno's cabin in the middle of a blizzard, we knew the ridge would be dangerous. But we wanted to pick up a present for little Beth Milford and make sure she had a Merry Christmas. We didn't leave the little girl at the roadhouse alone, of course. Her mother and father were with her. But we'd never have left at all if we'd known the menace that would strike while we were gone. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Remember, for delicious hot breakfasts, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth, more endurance in oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker Oats. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long.